everyone. I'm Adam Harry with JR. We're both from Bell Lost Souls, and today we have the new Tau Codex. Bum, bum, bum. We're going to be going through the forces of the Tau Empire today, mm -hmm. and we're going to be comparing them with Index Xenos 2, the Tau mm -hmm. in there as well. So Because there's a few subtle differences. Mm -hmm. um, Overall, like, not a whole bunch of, like, big sweeping changes. This isn't, no. like, a Tyranid Codex or anything yes. like that. Which was awesome. It, that was. That was amazing. I think yeah. that's kind of my favorite one. To, it's definitely today. my favorite but, one. Uh, but we're here to, today to talk about Tau, which, uh, if you want, like, a comparison, it's a lot more like the Eldar Codex. That's a great way to put it, yeah. yeah. The, the, the Eldar mm. Index to Codex wasn't a giant leap, and I don't feel like the Tau Index to Codex is a giant leap. Now, that said, you do have six SEPs. Mm -hmm. You do have uh, six warlord traits, and then and then six, six more. warlord traits, uh -huh. more warlord traits, unique to the steps. Stratagems, you get a ton of stratagems. You get a, a ton of relics, ton of which relics. are I think signature systems in this book. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of cool stuff yeah. here. You um, get the new uh, uh, abilities as well, like for the greater good is the same, but now it's more now stuff more has stuff it. has it. Masters of War uh -huh. for your commander, they have uh, a couple options there as well. So some of the things we saw in uh, chapter approved have migrated to this book too. So. Yes, that is correct. Um, so uh -huh. yeah, let's go ahead and get started with the forces of the Tau Empire. Ooh. So you, you want to talk about the abilities? real quick sure so they are basically the same two abilities that you're familiar with from the index xenos 2 we have the for the greater good and master of war Ma uh, for the greater good is the same everyone gets to overwatch when you charge someone within six inches of it uh, the big difference here is that some more stuff has it this time around yes. uh, notably like hammerheads yes uh, which is kind of cool <laughs> it's um, good yeah but also uh, master of war is uh, also different now uh, but not really. It's just that you can only have one commander uh, in your army now. So. Well, one one port, one commander per detachment. Yes, per detachment. So I have uh, a feeling the tower going to be a, uh, a, a multi detachment. Yeah, like every time, <laughs> every time. So uh, uh, starting off from the top, uh, Shadow Sun. Yeah, we've got Commander Shadow Sun. Uh, she is basically the the same as she was before. I think she is the same like point cost i think she might be or power level cost um i think she might be a little more uh, uh tweaked point wise i haven't checked out that yet but um yeah just uh just general though uh same kind of abilities there for the greater good master of war obviously mm -hmm. uh genius of kayun once per battle uh commander shadow sun can declare kayun even if kayun or Montka has already been declared again that's the once per battle ability her once per Excuse battle me. ability, twice per battle. Yeah. Uh, her and Farsight can do the same thing. Uh, she's an infiltrator. She's in a fancy experimental stealth suit. Yep, which um, does give her a five up invuln. It gives her a five up invuln, and it gives her a... a Camo fields. Which is a minus one to hit. Yep. So that's that's pretty great. Minus one to be hit. Yes, minus one to be hit, sorry. Yeah. Uh, she also comes with a command drone, um, and... Yep. Uh, two shield drones uh so up to two sh shield drones uh the command drone is the one you really want that gives her a a character aura buff basically you take your command drone you pick a unit within uh six inches of it or 12 inches of it and you can reroll once uh for for the, that while it's shooting Shadowson also has Savior Protocol. Well, the drones also have the Savior Protocol, which we should talk about that real yeah, quick. Yeah, so uh, the drone Savior Protocols have changed. Uh, the rumors are true. They can only uh, take an extra, take a wound for a unit on a two up. So yeah. basically, so it's not automatic anymore. Yeah, um, and they, you know, still have to be within three inches. So, uh, yeah. but other than that, it's basically the same. Pretty much. Uh, and then moving on to Commander Farsight. Mm -hmm. He is mostly the same, although he's got some changes that you yep. might have seen and previewed on our site. Uh, his high-intensity plasma rifle does yeah. extra damage now. He does two damage per and hit. And it's AP minus four. Which is real good, because uh, it, it, feels, it feels so good to have like that special character do the extra damage. Yeah. And the uh, Dawn Blade makes him hit at strength uh, eight now instead yeah. of strength five, which is also... Pretty uh, nice. Yeah. Minus four AP on that, and it's D3 damage. To mm -hmm. top that off. And Farsight, his weapon skill, too. Yeah. Farsight, by the way, beast in combat, plus two weapon skill, plus two ballistic skill, uh, base stats of strength five, tough five, six wounds, four attacks, leadership nine, three up save. So, mm -hmm. pretty good all around. And he's got a four up invulnerable save. Yep. And Thanks uh, to the shield generator. He can reroll uh, hit rolls of one in the, yep. in the fight phase. And um, he can, he's the counterpart to Shadow Sun. He can declare Montka. Yep up to twice in a in a game yep. 
Oh, and one other thing too. If he's ever targeting an orc unit, by the mm -hmm. way, he just gets rerolls, uh, 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 rerolls of one. Um, no matter what. Yeah, no matter what. Shooting, fighting. Whatever. And there isn't a special ability I wanted to cover real fast too. Yeah. That is the uh, Manta Strike. A lot of units in this uh, book have Manta Strike. Mm -hmm. Manta Strike is essentially Deep Strike. Yeah. So you can just it's... drop in nine inches away. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna see that repeated quite a bit. Uh, <clears throat> there's the uh, the the new unit in the in the codex, which is an old unit. Uh, basically, <laughs> they split commanders into two groups. There's the XV8 Crisis Suit and the XV85 Enforcer Suit, which is the newer kit. Uh, let's talk about the XV8 Crisis yes, Suit, which real is quick. the old kit. Yeah. Essentially. <laughs> um, basically, you have a a slightly cheaper. I think it's like four four or five points cheaper uh, Crisis Commander mm -hmm. that has uh, one less wound, um, and that's literally the only difference uh except you can also give them uh, a special piece of war gear the xv8-02 crisis iridium battle suit yeah. which gives it a two up save instead of a three up save uh which is pretty handy yeah it's not too bad you i mean you do miss out on the wound but you get a two up save so there's trade-offs to be had yeah. there uh, and they have all the crisis commander abilities they yeah. have uh, for the greater good they have their master war they have the uh, manta strikes so they can deep strike in uh, and other than that... They're... And it, again, still has four uh, hard points. Yes, still has four hard points. So you can do the crazy, you know... It comes standard with a burst cannon and missile pod, uh, but you can replace those with other weapons from the range item or support systems, and you can take an additional two more things from the range weapons and some work systems, mm -hmm. if you pay the points for that, too. So, yeah. And why wouldn't you? Because... That's that's what you do. Eight fusion blasters, right? Uh, well, four fusion blasters. Four. Eight. I would... Well, I'll take two detachments. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can only have one commander per detachment. Uh, there's the Enforcer battle suit, which is the same as the regular commander in the yep. in the index. Um, he, like the other one, comes with four hard points that you can swap stuff out for. He comes standard with a burst cannon and missile pod. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you can give him any of the the standard battle suit mm -hmm. war gear. And again, they they both come with further good or good in Master of War. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the Cold Star Commander Battle Suit, yeah, which is technically cool. the XV86 version, mm -hmm. which is pretty boss. Uh, he was a, a new model. I want to call one thing out, which is a big deal. He has a movement stat of 20. Yeah. Uh, he does have jetpack and fly. Yep. <clears throat> so um, that's pretty great. He <laughs> And uh, when he advances, he advances 20. So that's a total yeah. of 40 inches of move, uh, which is kind of amazing. Like Considering his weapons are assault weapons... I think I know where this is going. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, swap out his his uh, weapons. Uh, he comes standard with a high output burst cannon and missile pod, and then he has a total of four hard points. He's the only one that gets the high output burst cannon. Yeah. If you could give him, like, four of those, that'd be amazing. But I think you can only <sighs> take one. Yeah. Because uh, it's not... Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is fine. Uh, <laughs> I just well, wanna, it's in the ranged weapons wanna, list, right? No, it's, it's not on the ranged weapons list. Uh, the range weapon list, real fast. We have the uh, air bursting fragmentation projector, a burst mm -hmm. cannon, a uh, cyclic ion blaster, a flamer, a fusion blaster, a missile pod, plasma rifle, and then there is a note here: the cyclic ion blaster cannot be taken by a commander in a cold star. Right. Sorry. Uh, which is which is a shame. Uh, it would be nice to to have you know thirty two shots on a on a single uh, BS two. Uh, uh, commander. I don't know what that that's can, like. That I only can have move 24 shots. 40 inches around and get wherever you need. But uh, this this guy is still pretty great. Like I think I actually I mean, can, might yeah uh, might take him with some of the stratagems. I I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> I mean I'm totally looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, you also have uh, other other still in the commander section. You have Anva, who is more expensive now. He's about uh, he's one power level uh, more expensive and twenty points more expensive. Yep. This is another character. Yep. Yep. He's the the supreme ethereal. Um, ethereal. And he's got one of my favorite abilities. Um, so first let's let's go through his abilities. He's got failure is not an option, which is any Tau unit within six inches of him or any ethereal can use his leadership, which is nine, instead of their own. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also, this is my favorite ability, the Paradox of Duality. Whenever mm. he's attacked during the shooting phase, you add the AP of the attack to his save instead of subtracting it. So if someone uh, shoots him with, like, you know... A, AP minus four. Yeah, he's, he's, he's making a, a four-up save, so... And it, which is good, because he's only got a five-up save. 
So, uh, uh... No, it would be a bonus. So if he's got a 5-up save base with an AP of 4... Oh, yeah. He would have a 1-up. Right, so... He has a 2-up. Yeah. Basically. That's silly. Uh, which is pretty amazing. So if you shoot him with bolters with no AP... Yeah, then he'll be sad and die. <laughs> That's great. That <laughs> he'll, is... he'll be real sad and he'll be real dead. All right, I know where my gaunt <laughs> shooting is going to go. But that's you just screen him with a whole bunch of dro drones. Uh, while Anva, because he's the supreme uh, ethereal of all the Tau, yep. while he's on the battlefield, you can reroll all morale tests for any unit of yours that is on the battlefield. Yeah. Um, and then he can do up to two of the special ethereal powers. Which and is by the way, like... the, the, the ethereal powers are pretty wonky. They are. They have some cool stuff. The Grand Invocation of the Elements is another mm -hmm. ability he has. During the movement phase, uh, Anva may invoke him to two elemental powers. All friendly Tau Empire infantry and battle suit units within six inches of the model. Invoking an elemental power gain the relevant bonus benefit until the start of the next turn. A unit can only be affected by the same elemental power once per battle round. Mm -hmm. So what are we? we got the Calm of Tides. Mm -hmm. Subtract one from any morale test made for the effect unit. So just a little, mm -hmm. little morale boost. There's the Storm of Fire, which lets you reroll all hit rolls of one as long as you... In the shooting uh, phase. As, as long as you didn't move in the movement phase. Yep. The Sense of Stone, whenever you model in an affected unit, loses a wound, roll a d6. On a six, that model does not lose the wound. So a nice little fill no pain option there. And then you've got Zephyr's Grace, which lets you re-roll the dice for affected units when they advanced. I can see Storm of Fire and Sense of Stone being real popular Oh yeah, absolutely. For a, a gun line list there as they're uh, getting run at and they just shoot away. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, then you have uh, Anshi, yep. who is another special ethereal uh, character. Um he is more of like a, a melee combatant, which, again, in a Tau army is kind of a weird choice, but hey, he's, he's good at what he does. Um, he, like Anva, has failure is not an option. He has a 4-up invulnerable save, and he has uh, uh, the Blade Master ability, which gives him uh, either AP-2 to his close combat attacks, or it lets you reroll failed invulnerable saves. Uh, I do want to mention one thing, too. Uh, uh, Anchi has no save. Yeah. At like no armor save, it's a dash, so it's not even like a seven plus. No. So he's not even wearing like a t-shirt. So if, if he gets hit in a null zone, he's just dead. <sighs> Bad time. Well, he's got five wounds to chew through, so yeah. But he's only toughness three, so yeah. Uh, and he can do any of the invocation of elements, uh, but he can only do one because he's not one. as cool as Anva. Yeah, and then you can take a, a standard uh, ethereal who kind of the same thing. By the way, movement for all of these are movement six. Uh, a regular ethereal, ethereal is a uh, plus three weapon skill, plus four BS, strength and toughness three, four wounds, three attacks, leadership nine, and a five up save. And you can uh, put them on top of a hover drone to make these guys move eight. Yeah, but don't move those over water, because <laughs> no. everybody knows hoverboards don't work on water. It's true. Uh, then we still are kind of going through the HQ choices. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Cadre Fireblade. This guy's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I like him a lot. Um, he is a uh, basically a, a like a fire warrior HQ choice. He's your discount HQ at uh, yeah, only two power level. Yeah, and forty five forty five points, so super cheap. Yeah. Um, he comes with a marker light, a pulse rifle, and photon grenades. Uh, it's great that he has a marker light because sometimes you want to be able to like just have one to yeah. hit somewhere, and he's yeah. got a BS two, so he will hit. Which will be super handy for that. Yeah, just. Um, but the, the real reason you want him is because he gives uh, any any model within a uh, six, inch uh, bubble. six inch bubble can uh, fire one extra time with their pulse uh, pistol, carbine, or rifle when shooting at a target within uh, half of the weapon's range. So uh, if you are... so if you have a rapid fire one mm -hmm. and your range is thirty. Yeah, and you're you're getting you're the, shooting at fifteen inches. You're getting three shots. You're getting three shots, not uh -huh. four shots, because it's rapid fire gives you two shots. Right. And then the plus one extra shot. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. It's, I, I do want to mention one thing about this. He's got the marker light and pulse rifle and photon grenades. Um, he can fire the marker light and the pulse rifle, can't he? And that is incorrect. No. Uh, unless you're a vehicle, unless you're when a vehicle, you fire a marker light, you can only fire one... Uh, heavy. One, uh, that's the only thing you can do. Yeah. So Because it's heavy, right? Mm-hmm. See? 
Just wanted to mention that because I know somebody that tried to pull that. Ah. So just want to mention. Okay, moving on. We have uh, Dark Strider, yes. who is uh, largely unchanged from his uh, index incarnation, but yep. this guy is like a, a special character Pathfinder. Yeah. Um, he has a marker light, a pulse carbine, and some photon grenades. And he can't fire their marker light. He cannot. And the other weapon. Nope. Nobody can. He Unless you're a vehicle. Unless you're a vehicle. But uh, he does have the structural analyzer ability as well as the greater good, but the structural yep. analyzer lets you pick a uh, friendly infantry unit within six inches of him and any enemy unit that he can see. Uh, until the end of your shooting phase, uh, the infantry unit you picked gets plus one to wound rolls when you're attacking him, uh, which is a good way to like combo with like a unit of pathfinders yeah, yeah, or totally, something totally. that has um, uh, uh, rail rifles or other things that do mortal wounds on a six up. Yes, because it's a, it's a six plus, mm -hmm. so if you can roll a five or a six, those count, and then of course sixes yeah. count. So that's always super handy. And then we get to Long Strike, who's like the ultimate upgrade for a vehicle. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Long Strike, uh, <laughs> Long Strike's a single model equipped with a railgun. It's accompanied by two uh, gun drones, and they each have pulse carbines. Right. Only one of this unit can be included in your army. So uh, Long you, Strike's gunship, I you, should specify. You can swap out your railgun for an ion cannon, mm -hmm. and you can swap uh, out your gun drones for burst cannon or smart missile systems. And you can take some Seeger missiles, which have been changed. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, is a hammerhead, by the way. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It, yeah. Uh, so. He does have the damage chart, which we should mention. So, sure. Uh, he's got 13 wounds, so as he takes wounds, it's going to degrade. Uh, the first chunk is 7 through 13 plus wounds. He has a movement 12, BS 2 up, and 3 attacks in close combat. Uh, from 4 to 6, he drops to 6 inches of movement, uh, BS 3 and D3 attacks, mm -hmm. and then from one to three wounds, he only moves three inches with a four up uh, BS and one attack close combat. Right, but he's a tank, so all of it his attacks tank. hit on sixes anyway. Uh, yeah. But uh, this is where we can talk about some of the changes. Yes, uh, because they did, he did get some. <clears throat> he did. Uh, the ion cannon has been changed a lot. Yes. I really like it. It's it's at heavy three and heavy D6 now. For uh, overcharge, yeah. For, for overcharge. So if you're firing like on an overcharge... Uh, shot you you have a chance of doing a lot more damage um they uh, uh still 16 strange though that hasn't changed that that has not changed uh, i like it better than the railgun because you can really? get either three to a d6 shots and sure they're only strength seven or strength eight if you're overcharging which uh, i would if i were yeah yeah uh and they but they hit for uh two or three damage each yeah um which is pretty nice. Is and pretty, that's a straight static roll. Yeah. There's no like D3 game or right. So that's always nice. As as opposed to uh, the the rail gun, which like it's it's a strong gun, but it's a one strength ten shot that has you know it'll it'll hit, but yeah, the that, solid that, shot round that D6 damage yeah. uh, just isn't gonna do too much. Um, because you <clears throat> again the options are I take you know the standard shot comparatively is a strength seven versus a strength ten. Yeah. yeah, or when it's heavy three with two damage, or I overcharge that, and it's heavy D six shots, which are strength eight, and three and each damage. Each does three damage. Right. So if two of those make contact and punch through the armor, you're doing six damage versus the solid shot, which has D six damage. So if yeah. on average you're gonna get three and a half damage through. Exactly. With one, you know, it's just. The, the Ion it's Cannon rough. is, is, is the, the better choice, I think. But also, let's talk about Seeker Missiles, because those have changed. Um, they're no longer... Uh... Well, hang on. There's one other thing, too, that we need to mention. The Railgun, you can still fire in Submunition, mm -hmm. which is heavy D6 shots. But again, each one of those only does one damage. Right. And it's strength 6 minus 1 AP. Um, however, the Solid Shot does do one thing, uh, which I think it still does. Yeah. Which is every time you uh, make a room roll of six plus for weapon, the target suffers D3 mortal wounds in addition to the normal damage. So on the one in six chance where you do roll a six to, to, to wound, wound, yeah, uh, it has the potential to do nine total damage. Right. Or nine total wounds. So, or you get lucky with three shots from the overcharge. So, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I think Ion Cannon is the way to go with Long Strike. Yeah. Um, but also, the Seeker Missiles have changed, so they are still uh, they still only hit on six, and you can only shoot them once per battle. But mm -hmm. uh, instead of just doing one mortal wound to something, yeah. uh, they're now Strength 8 
uh, AP minus two, and they do a D6 damage each. How do you feel about that one? Uh, I don't know, because, like, on the one hand, it's it's great that they have a lot more damage potential. Yeah. Um, but you might not wound. You might not, and they might save. And they might save. Versus just taking one mortal wound. Yeah. I, I don't know, I think... The, I, I think it's better, I still. I feel like the extra, extra damage is worth it. I'm a little disappointed that it's one shot and it only hits on a six. Yeah. That part to me is weird. Well, that's that's where the marker light stuff comes in. Yeah, but it says you know regardless of the firing miles BS or any modifiers. Well, that's that's so. where the that's where the marker light like that specifically changes that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's, that's one only of the with, things with two, right? Well, yeah, that's one of the things that that long strike does really well. So let's talk about his abilities. Yeah. Uh, real quick. And so that I'll, was just I'll the in general, but this is yeah. why it's great for long strike. So uh, uh, long strike has. Um, he, ha you get to add one roll when he's attacking a vehicle or a monster. Yeah, the tank ace <clears throat> ability. So add one to the two wound roll, wound roll for uh, a vehicle or monster. He's a hover tank, which just means you you measure from the model, not the base. Yep. Um, he's got. Uh, you can give him drones. That that rule hasn't really changed. But he has the XV02 battlesuit, which means that uh, he treats the number of marker light counters on an enemy unit uh, as one higher. When yeah. when he's shooting at something, so if you have one marker light hit, uh, for him two. you have two, which means that you can fire your seeker missiles. Yeah, destroyer and seeker missiles fired at this unit uh, use the firing models BS and any modifiers rather than only hitting on sixes. So there is a way to overcome that, mm -hmm. which suddenly now you have a strength eight shot, hitting on theoretically a two up uh -huh. with minus two AP and T six damage. Yeah, I mean if if you get the first turn and. Uh, your first turn, he's undamaged. I'd, I'd say just shoot him before you have a chance to, to lose oh, yeah. damage because you can hit anything on the table with pretty a much. 72 inch range. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <clears throat> or you move up six inches and. And then also, uh, if, anyway. if he's hanging out with hammerheads, they he gives them plus one to hit, which is uh, pretty good because uh, Tau are hurting for ballistic skill in general. Um, you know, he is also a Tau hammerhead. He is. Within six inches. So, just saying, he is so then six inches of himself. Yes. So, yeah, that's he's got Tau Hammerhead gunship in he his does. Uh, in, in his, his, in his, his keywords. keywords. So, so, well, you know, pretty good. That means that he has two hit yeah. with a with a plus one. So I guess if if you've got One's a minus missed, if you've got yeah. a minus one to be hit though that kind of yeah. So, uh, my 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 venom throats are <clears> scared right now. <laughs> That's long strike, and that's the last of the HQ choices. Yeah. Uh, let's move into the troops. And, let's uh, do it. Let's so yeah, next up was breacher teams. Uh-huh. Uh, these guys are the, the close-in troops. I really like them. Yeah. Of all the blue fish people out there, they're pretty awesome. They're like your favorite Tau unit, right? Uh, After they, drones. They are one of my favorite Tau units. <laughs> I, I, I really want them to be good. Uh, you really want them to be good. <laughs> and, and I think they are. I think, I think there's a way to use them. I just haven't figured it out yet. Uh, but basically, these guys are fire warriors. Uh, they have all the same stats as a fire warrior. They have a six inch move, five up weapon skill, four up ballistic skill, uh, strength and toughness of three, one wound, one attack, four up save. Um, leadership six. Leadership but six. But they do have the Shaosu, who's a, a seven. Right. With plus one attack in close combat. So that's uh, a, that's a minor bit. Now, these are the guys that typically come with pulse. Carmine, uh, right? they, no, these guys have pulse, pulse blasters. blasters. They have now. like the Sorry. pulse shotguns. Pulse shotguns, uh, that's right, yeah. Uh, and so they have like um, yeah. they have like three different profiles depending on, on the range. So they have a 15, a 10 inch, or a 5 inch, and they get deadlier as you go down. They're assault 2, yeah. and they're either strength 4, strength 5, and AP minus 1, or strength 6, and AP minus 2, the closer you get to your opponents. Yeah. So close range is 5 inches, medium range is 10 inches, long range is 15 inches. Mm -hmm. All those again, assault 2. And close range is the one with the strength six, and um, long range is the four up. Yeah, these so guys want to move around uh, so mm -hmm. that they can get up close and blast you and then move on to the next thing. You can give them a turret if you want, um, but those things really only uh, support like a, a, a more static unit, so yeah. I don't know that I would with these guys. Yeah. Um, then there's the strike team, mm -hmm. uh, which is the standard fire warrior that you're used to these guys can take the pulse carbines or the pulse uh rifles yeah uh, which are the you know the standard the iconic long guns. gun yeah. the, the 30 inch rapid fire one strength five gun yeah um and we'll get into that later but there are some stratagems that will affect breacher teams and strike mm -hmm. teams that really really helps them out so absolutely uh then there is everyone's favorite bird Fruit. space bird 
Uh, there's the Crutes. Yep. Uh, we have the Crute Carnivores, which are the troop version. Uh, you get 10 of them in a unit, and they can be up to 20. Uh, they are, as a unit, uh, like more expensive than, than Fire Warriors, but they are a lot cheaper. Yeah, so real quick, too, stat wise, they're movement 7, uh -huh. so they're faster. They Weapon are faster. skill 3, BS 4, so they mm -hmm. hit just as well in shooting, but they're actually decent in close combat. Uh, strength and toughness 3. One wound, one attack, leadership six with a six up save. Yeah, that six up save is rough, rough for I them. Do you want to mention but, one thing though? Their crew rifle is actually not too shabby. Yeah. Twenty four inch range, rapid fire one, strength four, no AP, one damage. Pretty straightforward. And it gives them uh, plus one strength in melee, so they hit at strength four. Strength four, so pretty decent. Strength four again is kind of the average, but and given how yeah. cheap these guys are, like if, totally if you want if it. you want bodies on the field, the crew are the way to go. Yep. Uh, speaking of, uh, moving into the elites now, there's the Crute Shaper. Yeah. Crute Shaper, uh, strength, uh, sorry, movement 7, uh, weapon skill 3, BS 4, uh, strength and toughness 3, 5 wounds, this is kind of like the elite character, mm -hmm. so 3 attacks, uh, leadership 7, and a 6 up save. And then uh, he has an ability called Wisest of the Crute. Uh, wisest of their kind, Crute units, yeah, Wisest of their kind, Crute units within 6 inches of a friendly Crute Shaper may use the Shaper's leadership instead of their own when taking route tests. And they also have the Shaper command uh, commands, which lets you re-roll wounds of one for friendly Crute units within six inches of this model. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the Crutox Riders. Uh, these guys are the ones on the big uh, uh, Crutox. Crew, <laughs> uh, and they have the, the Crute gun, which is a 48-inch Rapid fire one gun that has uh, strength seven and AP one and does a D three damage. Yeah, not so to be confused with the crew rifle. Right. Yeah. Uh, this is like a big machine gun kind of thing. Yeah, uh, it's pretty it's, sweet. It's pretty sweet actually, and at strength seven and a D three damage. Yeah. Each that that's not too bad, especially well, considering day, yeah. especially considering how cheap these guys are. They will die uh, as soon as an enemy just kind of yeah like six up save across them. the board for these guys. So look out for that. Yeah. Uh, and then we get to <laughs> one of your other favorite units. Yeah, the stealth suits. Stealth suits, stealth battle suits, XV 25s. Uh, movement 8, pretty good. Weapon skill 5, BS 4, strength 4, toughness 4. Uh, two wounds a pop. Mm -hmm. uh, two attacks, leadership 7, 3 up save. Leadership 8 on the Chasseferi, uh, who's the squad sergeant, essentially. Yep. Uh, pretty standard loadouts we've seen before. Burst cannon, fusion blaster, marker light options. Um... So that hasn't changed too much. Nope, and they can all take a single support systems unit. Uh, if you if or shoot you, support item from the yeah. yeah one one for every uh, one for every three can swap out their marker light for or their burst cannon for a fusion blaster, mm -hmm. um, and uh, they can take a homing beacon, which has changed. Uh, so let's talk about yeah, that real quick. Yeah, how has that changed? So homing beacons have changed. Uh, they the the way they work is uh, you drop a homing beacon and you can bring in a, a unit from your that's got the mantis strike ability yeah uh you can bring them in within six inches of the homing unit and uh uh that's it so you can set up within uh yeah. within three inches or within one inch or however close you want to be to to an enemy um no real quick to uh, one of operations be... here, the home beacon may be used at the start of your movement and phase. That's that's how it's changed, because yeah. it used to be you just would use it during the movement phase, but now it is at the start yeah. of your movement phase. If there are any friendly homing beacons on the battlefield at the end of your movement phase, one of your SEP units that has been set up in the Manta Hold uh, can perform the low altitude drop, which is the Manta Strike. Mm -hmm. uh, you set the unit wholly within six inches of the homing beacon. The beacon then shorts out and is removed from the battlefield. Homing beacons are deactivated and removed from the battlefield if an enemy model ends a move within nine inches of it. So just like JR was saying, you can drop this homing beacon danger close. Yeah. And you can drop a unit on the you, homing beacon. You just have to be outside of that one inch of uh, yep. melee bubble of, of a unit, the personal space bubble. But you can get as close as you want uh, if you can pull that off. Yeah. Uh, which is which is pretty cool. Yeah, I kind of like that ability. But again, if you drop the homing beacon and a unit an enemy unit ends its move in nine inches of it, then it's wiped out. Right. But it, you you drop it on your turn. And so basically, it's encouraging you to use it the turn you drop it. Right, which yeah. is kind of cool. Uh, and then, of course, they have infiltrators, so you can deploy them anywhere, but they have to stay more than 12 inches away from an enemy unit yeah. uh, rather than nine. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they uh, they can move and uh, they can move and and hit things. Uh, they do have fly, so again, if they get attacked, um, they can fall back. Now, GW mentioned uh, there's a stratagem later on, which we'll talk mm-hmm. about with a cold star. No. Uh, yeah, one of the, with was the ghost, ghost kill suit. Ghost kill suit, where you could pick them up and redeploy them, and a lot of folks were like, "They already have fly. Why does that matter?" It's it's for the uh, the homing beacon. The homing thing. beacon, yeah. It lets you redeploy them at the start of your movement phase, yeah. uh, which then at the start of your movement phase you can drop a homing yeah. beacon. So uh, it's a it's a cool little combo, a cool combo if you combo. if you need to bring something in danger close. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have the Christ- also oh. uh, they can still charge yeah. cause, because it doesn't count as fall back. They could still back advance even if they yeah. wanted. It's kind of a cool cool ability. It is. I don't know if it's worth the command points, but that's for another show. Uh, Crisis battle suits. They're back, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, eight inch move weapon skill BS uh, weapon skill five BS four. Just pretty standard stuff we've seen yeah. before. Strength toughness five. Three wounds. Three, uh, two attacks, uh, leadership seven base, and uh, three up save. Yep, and for every three in the unit, you can give one of them the Iridium Battle Suit, which gives them a two up save. You can't do it to all three of them, though. Which is interesting. Which is really interesting, especially considering how expensive these guys are. They, yeah. they cost uh, more than they did in the uh, in the index. Uh, I, I like more raw. Like the weapons have gotten cheaper, but yeah. but the price per model. As, I uh, guess if you wanted to put that on the shots free, yeah, you could you could give the, him you the, could squad give the squad leader essentially a two up the, save. The two up save. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's it's interesting to me that you can't do that with um, with all of them. Uh, yeah. At any rate, uh, but these, they they do have three hard points. Yep, they've got three hard points that you can put uh, basically any of the ranged guns on. They come with a burst cannon, standard. Yeah. Uh, and other than that, they've got for the greater good, just like pretty much everything else, except for the crew that we've talked about. Now, there's a way to get crew to that, but that's a whole other mm-hmm. thing. Uh, there are also the crisis bodyguards, which are crisis suits, but they also have the uh, sworn protectors ability. Uh, that's their only difference. Uh, that gives them the the bodyguard role on a two up. Uh, they can they can take the take the wound for someone else. By the way, these suits. They've got Manta Strike, mm-hmm. so Deep Strike is all an option. Um, anything else that's unique about the Crisis Bodyguards? No, that's, so. that's the only difference is yeah, that they can, they can they can on a two-up intercept a hit. Yeah. Kind of like a drone. Yeah. Um, and then we have Farsight Marksman, mm-hmm. uh, which is a really cheap option here, one power level. It's a great uh, way to get a, a marker light uh, yes. that will that will hit reliably. Because it's a three BS three ability. Uh-huh. And uh, he's got a stealth field that gives him uh, an extra plus two uh, to his saves when in cover. Mm-hmm. So you can like set him up someplace. He's got a four up save. If you get him in cover, that drops it to a two up save. Mm-hmm. And it's just a really great way to get a cheap marker light out there. Plus, uh, as an elite slot. You can use that to help fill out some of those attachments that you're going to be taking. Exactly. Uh, you know, for for on the dirt cheap, so kind of cool. And then uh, we also have the Ghost Kill Battle Suit. This is one of my favorite yeah, uh, yeah, models, yeah. just in general. I, I love this thing. I think it's great. Yeah. Uh, they've they've made some really cool changes to it uh, mm-hmm. over the in the jump from Index to Codex. It uh, does have a damage uh, uh, tree now. It does. So. It's got ten Chart. wounds, uh, and it's at, its break is at six to ten. Three to five, and then one to two wounds left, uh, and then from six to ten, it's got twelve inches of movement, uh, four up BS, and three attacks. Uh, it's got eight inches of movement at the second tier, five up BS, and two attacks, and mm-hmm. then it drops down to four inches of movement, five up BS, and one attack. Yeah. Um, so it becomes much more stationary as you go. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, this thing is hard to take down, and we'll talk about why. But let's uh, some of the changes that they have made yeah. uh, affect its, its weaponry. So uh, first up, it's got two big guns that you can take, either the Fusion Collider or the Cyclic Ion Raker. Uh, both have been um, adjusted, I well, think. Well, and the Burst Cannon, too. And but... the Burst Cannon, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, Burst Cannon, Flamer, Fusion Blaster, but the Fusion Collider and the Cyclic Ion Raker have are, been modified. Have been changed. Uh, so yeah. the, the uh, Cyclic Ion Raker has been changed so that it does a, a just a fixed d6 it's heavy it's, it's no longer d6 heavy it's just it's, always heavy six yeah it's heavy six whether you're overcharging it or yeah. not because it used to be overcharged uh it would be heavy d6 for Which some reason weird, yeah, yeah it is weird. i think that was a misprint person um <laughs> then there's also the uh uh 
the fusion collider hasn't had its stats changed. It's just, I think, been adjusted, and it, it hits for uh, a d6 damage. Cool. Uh, so, you know, if you want, like, a souped-up fusion blaster or a souped-up burst cannon, you've got mm-hmm. it. Um, this thing can also take up to two support systems, which is good. You'll want something to help offset the fact that you're going to be firing a heavy unit, a heavy weapon, and yeah. you're going to be want to be moving around. Um, it's got the... Which you can do. You can. <laughs> The Ghost Kill uh, Electro Warfare Suite is pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls for the model attacking this model from more than six inches away. So basically during your opponent's shooting step, or Overwatch for that matter, if yeah. you're getting shot at, uh, if you're more than six inches away, it's a minus one to be hit, which is great because anytime you can mess with your opponent's pulls of skill is awesome yeah. in my book. Yeah, uh, and you can combo the Ghost Kill Battle Suit with... Uh, it, it comes with two stealth drones. Uh, the stealth drones generate a uh, stealth field that uh, means that enemies attacking you or a ghost scale battle suit within three inches of them uh, subtract an additional one from the hit roll. And so in if case you're, you're wondering, it does specifically say this is cumulative. So if you're outside a six and uh, this thing still has stealth drones up, you are at a minus two to hit it. Yeah, I don't think orcs can even shoot that thing. <laughs> I, I don't think so either. They have to try and take out the drones first. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, it's also got infiltrator, so it can set up along with your stealth suits wherever it wants. And then finally... We get to the Riptide. Codex guy. Riptide. Right. No, well, kind of. But kind of, yeah. Yeah, Codex Riptide 3.0 at this point? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but the Riptide is amazing, uh, just like before. Uh... It's a single model. It's got the damage uh, tiers as well. Uh, it's got 14 wounds to start. Uh, the break there is at seven. Then it goes to four to uh, six to four, and then uh, one to three. So uh, at the top tier, it's going to be moving 12 inches. Uh, BS four, four attacks in close combat. From four to six, the second tier, it's got uh, eight inch move, five plus uh, BS, and then three attacks. And then from one to three, four inch move, still hitting on a five up in BS, and then uh, two attacks. Uh, but it has standard, it comes with a heavy burst cannon and two spar missile systems, but and you can take up to two more shield drones as well, which can each have a missile pod. Weapon-wise, fusion blaster, heavy burst cannon, the ion accelerator, which mm-hmm. I believe got some tweaks to it, which we get to, a missile pod, plasma rifle, and then a smart missile system. And you can replace both of its smart missile systems with two plasma rifles or two fusion blasters, mm-hmm. which is pretty mean. Uh, you can also replace this model's heavy burst cannon with an ion accelerator, which we'll get to, and uh, uh, can also take two more items from the support systems list, which, which is great because <clears throat> again, again, one of them mm-hmm. is is the ability to move and shoot uh, heavy yeah. weapons without suffering a penalty for doing so. And these guys have a lot of mobility, so you wanna you wanna do that. Although, yeah. uh, with if you if you take the ion accelerator one, you m- might not need to as much because that's a seventy two <laughs> inch range. Yeah, you probably don't need to move <clears throat> too, um, too much. So let's and talk about. It still has its Nova Reactor, but the, go ahead. These two weapons have, have changed the heavy burst cannon and the ion accelerator. The heavy burst cannon is now just flat out 12. Uh, anytime you shoot, it, there's no overcharge option. Yep. Uh, it's just heavy 12, strength 6, and it does 2 damage. Uh, or you can, when you're using the Nova Reactor, add 6 shots to that, making it heavy 18. Brutal. Uh, which is incredibly brutal. Uh, or you can, if you have the ion accelerator, you get a heavy D6 shots. Um, and you can, uh, if you're Nova charging, just get six shots guaranteed. Yeah. Um, which is, which is pretty spicy. The Ion Accelerator has had its damage adjusted as well. It, mm-hmm. It's strength eight base and it does D3, uh, base and is AP minus three. Or, uh, if you're overcharging, it's, uh, strength nine, AP minus three, and it does three damage flat. Yeah. Uh, so now, if you do roll one or more hit rolls of one... <clears throat> The bear does suffer a mortal wound after all that. But at the most, you can only ever suffer one mortal wound now instead of one per one that you roll, which is kind of true. So it's one or more hit rolls of one. So that's that's if you if you roll like eight ones, which I mean you got d six shots, so that's really awkward. But yeah, (laughs) if if you rolled like six ones, ones, you're not gonna like wreck half of your your suit. Right, it's still just one mortal wound. Um, which is which is nice, Uh, especially since. Like this thing is going to put out three damage. Like this is the the anti armor gun that the the sure, cow yeah. army wants. I, I like that so much better than the um the rail than the, the rail cannon. Yeah. Yeah. And they're both seventy two inch. Range. Yeah, there's they're seventy two inch range, but you get six shots or, or up to six shots 
and you can you can really make them hurt. And even if you don't overcharge it, you can still really make them hurt. I think it's just really brutal. It's it's heavy D6, but the, you can overcharge it with the Nova thing to get six just straight shots. Three damage per shot, too. Yeah. So that's a possibility of, if my math is right, 18 damage, which will put a, a damper on just about any any mm -hmm. kind of unit. Now, so. you are BS4, so... You will have, uh, you will need some help making sure that all of those hit. Yeah, but if only there were ways to get plus ones to hit in this book. Well, you need five marker light hits to do that. That's a lot. If though. only there's a way to get cheap marker lights. <laughs> uh, the uh, Nova charge, uh, Nova reactor ability is is pretty much the same. You you basically do a mortal wound to your model, and uh, in exchange get the ability to do. Uh, a three up and vulnerable save. You get you can move two d six in your charge phase even if you don't charge. You or, choose one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can uh, uh, choose to fire your guns with extra shots. Um, yeah. I do like the option to change the uh, heavy burst cannon to heavy eighteen. Yeah. On honestly, like the ion gun is good, but I think the burst cannon is the the better option. Uh, all, yeah, all around. I, oh man, like, it really depends. I think you have to choose when you uh, what battlefield role you want the Riptide to be. I, I feel like I'd still rather have 18 strength 6 shots that do 2 damage each. I mean, that's going to tear up any any infantry unit for sure. Well, yeah, for, for sure. That's going to destroy infantry, yeah. but even against like vehicles and stuff. It's, it's scary against vehicles, but again, remember, you're only BS4, mm -hmm. and uh, strength 6 versus most... Even light armor is tough seven. Yeah, and you're still wounding on on fives. Oh, yeah. But there yeah. are ways. It's a lot of shots. And there are ways around that. But there too. are ways around getting. Uh, yeah, yes. So absolutely, let's absolutely. Uh, let's uh, uh, move on to the next one, uh, which is going to be which is fast attacks. Uh, so next up we have the Pathfinder team, mm -hmm. uh, which which is basically the same as it is in the index. Right. Uh, same standard kind of fire warrior or tau troop stat line. Uh, these guys do have move uh, seven, so they're a little faster. Nice. But they have uh, weapon skill five, uh, BS four up, mm -hmm. uh, strength and toughness of three, one wound, one attack, and a five up save. Um, uh, the Shashu. Shazui. Shazui uh, does get an extra attack. Uh huh. And has a leadership of seven. Yep, so that's nice. It is pretty nice. Uh, and you can give them, they, they come standard with uh, marker lights and pulse carbines. Um, but you can also give uh, a few of them either ion rifles or rail rifles. Mm -hmm. um, and the ion rifle it has been changed a little bit. Uh, it is rapid fire one or heavy D three. Uh, if you overcharge it, if you overcharge it, uh, you do two damage instead of the one damage that you used to do. And it's strength eight. And, and it's strength you know, eight. So it gets better. So yeah. it's nice. It is pretty nice. Yeah. Um, of course, you still die on a roll of one. It's true. You do. So all that all that safe tower technology they. <clears throat> They started using untested, <laughs> untested methods again, which is which is pretty good because th this is like the answer to the oh uh, you know tau don't really tau plasma is kind of weaker. Mm -hmm. Then there's also the rail rifle, which is basically the same as it was. It's strength six, AP four, and does a D three damage. And every time you make a wound roll of six, uh, you do a mortal wound in addition to normal damage. Yeah, and rapid fire. Mm -hmm. So so still a nice weapon. Yeah. All my tower drill rifles. Oh, that'd be great if you could if you could give more than one. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I just want like who needs pulse rifles when you can have rail rifles? Right? Exactly. That's that's the answer to all your problems. It would it would be if only. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got the TX4 Piranhas. Woo! These are the speeders. Uh, mm -hmm. They've got a 16-inch move, uh, six six up weapon skill, four up ballistic skills, strength four, tough five, six wounds, uh, two attacks. Yay. Leadership of six and a four up save. Well, you know, for all those times that you want to just charge things with your with your speeders. With your piranhas. I mean, you got to get those piranhas in there. Uh, six dance move is nice though. Yeah. That is uh, that is faster than a lot of other speeder vehicles you see that uh, go like more fourteen, like bikes and stuff like that. Absolutely. Um, so that's a that's a cool thing that they got there. Um, uh, they come standard with a, a burst cannon, which you can swap out for a fusion blaster. Mm -hmm. So it's basically your choice of do you want to get like four strength five shots or one. Uh, strength eight shot does a d6 damage. Right. Uh, I think almost always I'd I'd go with the uh, the fusion blaster and try and get them up up close to take out vehicles or something like that. Definitely a good option. Uh, it does come with two gun drones attached. Mm -hmm. um, so combining that with the burst cannon can let you put out a lot of firepower. Yeah, you could, you could put if out, you really want to get that anti-infantry going there. <laughs> you, you could put out twelve shots with one of these things. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, other than that, they they have a chance to explode on a, on a six up, in, in, in like it's a little tiny explosion. It's only a three inch radius, mm-hmm. um, and they they let you uh, if you take the drones, they let you just drop them off and do other things. Yep, like my normal drones. Yep. Uh, speaking of drones. Oh yes. Definitely the best unit in the game. Uh, yep. Still, even though they've changed them and made them more expensive, uh, gun drones are, are half as uh, half again as much as they were. They've gone up to 12 points from 8. So they are now, uh, uh, like, more than 50% the, the price of a Fire Warrior. But it's worth it. Still <laughs> utterly worth it. Um, <clears throat> you can take... They, they come in, in uh, units of 4, 8, or uh, up to 12. 12. Mm-hmm. All together, uh, the the gun drones come with two pulse carbines, uh, so that's four shots standard. Now they're only ballistic skill five, and uh, but they are toughness four, so they're tougher than a fire warrior. Yep. And they have a four up save. Um, so basically, uh, each one of these has like double to quadruple the firepower of, right. of a fire warrior. Depends on if you've got your cadre fire blade near, yes. nearby. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they, they do benefit from the fire blade yep. and from any other stuff that benefits uh, uh, Tau shooting. Tau, yep. If you have a drone controller nearby, they get a plus one to their ballistic skill, so they shoot just as good as a fire warrior. I can put out six shots each, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, five shots Five each. shots each, okay. Um, with a with fire blade nearby. Right. Which is amazing. Um, utterly amazing, but uh, that's that's them. You can also, if you wanted to, I guess, take shield drones or marker drones. Mm-hmm. Shield drones are uh, kind of good at blocking things. They have a four up invulnerable save, and they have a uh, five up feel no pain. Uh, and marker drones can shoot their marker lights uh, while moving without suffering a penalty for doing so. Yeah. So, yeah, if you just want to have a whole ton of marker lights that's uh, that's it for you that is that is a good way to do that yeah. yes um there are also the everyone's favorite insect toys that i see all the time best unit in the game obviously <laughs> the vespid sting wings uh who they've got a 14 inch move so they they are fast yep. and they can uh deep strike in with with their ability to plunge from the sky Ooh. they've got uh to the deaths. yeah no kidding they've got a weapon and ballistic skill of four uh, they've got a strength of three, a toughness of four, so they're a little tougher yeah, than, no. than most things in the they're tower They're tough as a, as a gun drone. They are. Uh, <laughs> and But they only have one gun, so they have half as many shots as, as a gun drone. It's true. It is AP2, uh, but... Which, I, is, which is nice. Which is nice. I'd still rather have four shots than two. Uh, and then finally, we have... The crew towns. Oh. Uh, which which um, which uh, make a you know a, a chicken oh. a chicken kind of noise right? Kaku kaku yeah, uh, definitely. Um. Uh, these guys are move twelve. Uh, they are uh, weapon skill three, uh, strength and tough three. They have two attacks each mm-hmm. though, and uh, you can take them in units of four to twelve as mm-hmm. well. They are they're cheap. They're, they're four are... points each. They're 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 in fact I believe they're the cheapest fast attack slot you can take in the game at sixteen points for a unit. Absolutely. Uh, so so like. You can, if you want to fill out some detachments to have mm-hmm. more commanders in your squad or whatever, like, these guys are amazing. Yep. Um, uh, they're one of the most improved units in this book, I think. Absolutely. Because uh, they get they get a whole stratagem just for crew towns. They, they do. They, yeah. they uh, If they attack something, it makes it easier for, for crew to charge to in charge as well. To charge in there, yeah. Uh, I, I would love to see more of these guys. Uh, uh, that's, that's it for fast attacks. <clears throat> yeah, next up is heavy support. Yep. We got the uh, broadside up first. Yes. Pretty uh, excited about this one, right? These it's guys. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, you know. Broadsides. Broadsides. Uh, they're they're one of the the biggest sources of firepower that are in the Tau army. Um, they have the the uh, two up save base. They only yeah. have a five up move. They have a weapon skill of five, ballistic skill of four up, strength and toughness of five, and six wounds. And two attacks base. Yeah, the tough five with a two up, two up save and, and six wounds is not too shabby. No, they, they they can take a lot of punishment and yeah. will be because they have less than ten wounds. They are going to be fighting effective mm-hmm. right up until the very end. Um, yeah, they have no damage charge, so they're <clears> just going to constantly be pumping out the shots. It's pretty great. Uh, or kicking out the jams, as it were. They they can take the heavy rail rifle, uh, or they can take uh, some high yield missile pods. Yeah. Uh, they can take. Uh, smart missile systems or plasma rifles and they can also just take uh random uh, seeker missile random seeker missiles one one each 
Yeah. Uh, and they can take some drones, which uh, they can they can take the missile drones, uh, which is pretty cool. They also can take one option from the support system, mm -hmm. which might come in handy, considering most of these weapons are heavy. That's if true. You do want to move and fire? You got some some help there. Uh, the weapons are pretty much exactly all exactly as they were in the index. I think the point costs have been adjusted on mm -hmm. on some of them, so they're cheaper. Uh, uh, across the board to to kit out the way you want. Yeah. Um, but other than that, like they they kit on fours. They are either strength eight or strength seven with their their attacks that you care about. Mm -hmm. and they'll do a d6 or d3 damage with the attacks that you care Would about. Would you roll with the heavy rail rifle or the high yield missile pod, missile pods? I, I think generally the the missile pods because you're getting four shots. I like, like the missile pods as well. You're, you're losing out on range, but your heavy four, your strength seven, AP minus one with d3 damage, and it's yeah, like it can kick out a lot of missiles. And they're good against like high wound things, so they're mm -hmm. good against like heavy infantry. Uh, they're great against stuff like the custodes or whatever. Um, or, or big tough things uh, because you just get a ton of shots. Yeah, you're basically trading in your one uh, rail you're rifle two, for you two. You get two rail rifle shots, but you're getting... Well, you, yeah, but you only have one rail rifle. You're right. trading that in for two missile pods. Yeah. So in essence, you're trading your two shots from the rail rifle for eight shots of missile pods. It's true. In terms of options. Which, so. uh, like, I, I would go with pretty much every yeah. time. They, Volume they are fire seems better. More expensive, but the yeah. bucket of dice is the most powerful weapon in 40k. Yep. Next up is the hammerhead gum gunship. Yep. I almost said gumship. That would have been fun. Mm, oh, Chew yeah. on that one for a while. <laughs> uh, we we kind of talked about this already with uh, long strike. Yeah. It's pretty much the same options. Yeah. They're uh, BS three base instead of uh, two. Two. Yep. Uh, but with long strike nearby, they they become two. Suddenly, like uh, three hammerheads. Yeah. Seems like Which, a mean thing it, it to do. It does seem like a mean thing to do, and they have uh, a couple of uh, minor adjustments as well. Um, I don't remember about the point cost, but I do believe that they they get uh, yeah they get for the greater good now, uh, which yes. they did not before. Um, they can take uh, drones or burst cannon, or uh, you can even give them a smart missile system, which I like to do because it means you can like park them somewhere and they can shoot at things no matter what. Yes, oh, so never just mind. Just to clarify, just to clarify, the gun drones on the hammerhead have I misread the greater that. good. The the hammerhead itself does not have the for the greater good. Which is kind of hilarious, uh, because it means that um, uh, you can charge the hammerhead, <laughs> and then the drones can shoot you. You know. Uh, uh, well, no. While they're attached, um, you are. They are embarked, and the hammerhead is treated as being. No, no. I'm saying if the, if the drones detach. Ah, uh, yes. And you charge the hammerhead. I, I think you can fire the drone. The drones. Yes, absolutely. At, that's, that's just funny. To me. It's it's kind of. Hilarious. So never mind about them having the greater good. Uh, that was a, a mistake. Um, moving on. Moving on. Uh, they can take the railgun or the ion cannon uh, as Which their, their about, primary yeah. weapon. Um, Still get the secret missile option. Yep. And uh, yeah. that's pretty much the hammerheads. Then there's the sky ray gunship. Um, what is that? That's that's this guy. That's this one I'm right scared. here. I know. Uh, but yeah, no, seriously though, uh, there, you might see one of them now. Yeah, it's, they're <laughs> actually worth considering. Yeah. Uh, the the big difference between that and the um, the the Skyray and the Hammerhead, of course, is the the missiles that it can take. Right? Yes. Um, but so the, the the big problem is the the mo the main thing they have is six seeker missiles, right? That's their their main gun. Yeah. Um, but. They do have two marker lights. They do have two marker lights. So if lights. you can hit with the marker lights, suddenly those seeker missiles are hitting on, on your BS of three instead of instead of on six. Uh, but you you only ever get six shots with them. So yeah. they could they could fire like all six of them in in one turn, and then they're out of of their. And then you have a guns. really really fancy marker light unit. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could you could still move around and like block things and, yeah. and charge guys. Or and whatever. it is tough. I mean, the it thing is, is tough. tough. Seven with thirteen wounds. But it, especially for how expensive it is, I, I just I still don't know about the the yeah. utility of that. Well, uh, on the flip side, though, if you use the Skyray with the velocity tracker, suddenly mm -hmm. those seeker missiles can be hitting on a three. Yeah. Or a two. Or a two. Actually, yeah. Because you add plus one to units that have fly. Yeah, and flyers are not typically like the toughest. Or best armored, so a minus two AP D six damage shot 
I mean, you can you can make some flyers fly out of the yeah. sky. So yep, it, it, like a D six damage is great, uh, but it does mean that there are going to be those times when you just do one you damage. You do the one. Yeah. And you're like, oh, why? I only have, especially since you only have six shots. Yeah. During the course of a game, which I mean, to be fair, if you are a railgun, right, and you have a heavy one, you're you're only going to get like five shots with that maximum in a in a five turn game. In a five turn, yeah, you might. Oh, well, in a six turn, you get make it six. But right. yeah, exactly. But, but so. like you're you're getting the same number of shots. It's just you can run out of ammo with the, the yeah. sky ray. It feels like like it's a more limited resource than it actually is if you think about it. Yeah. In those terms. So, uh, anyway, moving on. Next up is our uh, one of your favorite units. Yes, the, the sniper, the sniper drones. drones. I like these guys. Yeah. Um, they have gotten a little bit of improvements. Uh, they're mostly the same. They're drones, so they have an 8-inch move, 5-up weapon and ballistic skill, uh, strength 3, toughness 4, uh, 1 wounded attack, 4-up saves, uh, but they have long-shot pulse rifles, which have been changed. Yeah, they actually, long-shot pulse rifles are actually pretty decent now, yeah. comparatively. Um, they're still snipers, so you can pick a character out, but the key thing is when you make a wound roll of 6-plus for the weapon, uh, it inflicts a mortal wound to the target in addition to its normal damage. So now you've got the potential of actually doing two damage or two wounds to a character versus just one. Um, so I think a unit of six. Yeah. Uh, targeting, say, like a space marine, like C captain or captain, something. Yeah. It, it has a. It, let's be honest. Snipers have that issue of. Yes. Like, snipers in general. Snipers in general. Are are not. Good yeah, in, they they in, can't in. they can't quite do the damage they need to be able to do to be effective. I right. feel uh, against characters to use their ability, but but that thing on a six plus of automatically uh, getting a mortal wound in there is kind of nice. They already have a five up BS. Like, yeah, they only hit on fives anyway, so sixes are going to do a mortal wound. So okay. uh, next up we have the we're into transports now. Yeah, we've got the devilfish, which is the only transport. Yeah, <laughs> um, pretty easy there. It's everything that's on like a the, the same like tau vehicle chassis. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a it, it's got uh, twelve wounds instead of thirteen, uh, but it it has twelve inch move that drops to six and then drops to three. Yeah. Uh, it comes with a burst cannon, pulse carbines uh, on the gun drones that it can take. Uh, you can give it seeker missiles or smart missile systems. Um, I don't and know, do, you, do you run these with a lot of upgrades, or I don't know? I usually just take them for for as cheap as I can to either transport things or to um, get more drones. To get more drones. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we're honest, yeah, yeah, uh, it's not a bad thing though. It still has fly, so you can get out of combat and shoot with it. So it's absolutely. great for blocking uh, area area denial. It's it's great for area denial. It's great mm -hmm. for tying up things because it's so fast. It's real great for tying up things mm -hmm. that can't just back away and shoot. Yeah. Um, Whereas it can. Which yeah, is nice, so. it can. So you can yeah. always do uh, uh, something with it. Yeah, but not a whole lot's changed for the double fish. But we do have the uh, Razor Shark Strike Strike Fighters, uh -huh. the new uh, flyer. Yeah. The, or not the new flyer, but the, but the, the flyer support here. Uh, they are uh, they're a pretty fun unit, actually. I, I, I like the, the changes that have been made to them. Um, they have the... Uh, and they come normally with the burst cannon, the quad ion turret, and two seeker missiles. And I don't think you uh, you can really do much to mess with that. Except you can't for, replace the burst cannon with a missile pod. Yeah. But again, it's not super super customizable. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah. Um, the quad ion turret has been changed, so it's yeah. now just straight up assault four, which is great because you have to move, so you're no longer like uh, uh, penalized for for having that. Um, and it does, uh, it's strength 7, 1 damage, or you can overcharge it to do the yeah. D3 damage, which is pretty good. Yeah, it's got a 30 inch range, and on top of that, it uh, you do add 1 to hit rolls for this weapon against the targets that can't fly, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, this unit is airborne, so again, only flyers can engage it in close combat and fighting. Uh, it is supersonic, so you get the crazy movement abilities with that. Um, it is also hard to hit, so uh, thanks to that, it's a minus 1 to be hit. And then it does explode if yes. it uh, goes down. So, yeah, pretty typical for a, for an actual for, flyer. For, for a flyer. And then, of course, there's the, the Sun Shark Bomber. Yeah, the uh, Bomber uh, also takes a uh, Missile Pod and two Seeker Missiles. Um, you can take a couple of Interceptor Drones as well, mm -hmm. which uh, each have two Ion Rifles. Um, yeah, 
Anything else fancy about this uh, one? The ion rifles have been changed, so they do two damage when you're overcharging yeah, them. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, and other than that, no, not not too much has changed other than the... the pulse bomb's the same too, right? Yeah, the, the pulse bomb is the same. Uh, the... Uh, Pretty much everything is is exactly as it was. I didn't see. I never saw too many of these. Yeah, the, yeah. Moving on. There's the tide wall shield line. These are the uh, fortifications, and we actually really like the fortifications. Yeah, they, they seem really cool. Yeah, uh, I'd like to see more of these. I would I like think, to. I think yeah. part of the problem is that that kit sold out really fast. It did. So uh, that was a big problem that the the tide wall shield line kit, and then GW released the other other fortifications along with that kit separately. Um, it was kind of hard to get a hold of. Yeah, so. uh, I and mean, it's cool because it, it's it's a fortification that has a six inch move. Yeah, <laughs> which is which is pretty great. Um, uh, it it you can have your guys like hide out within it, and they they can like they they you have to blow up the yeah. the shield line in order to to get at them. Yeah, which is a great. There's way two to parts to it, which is guys. yeah, the shield line and the defense platform. Mm -hmm. The shield line is tough six with a ten wounds and a four up save, and the defense platform is tough seven with ten wounds and a four up save. So yeah. if you want to get to the tasty insides, you got to chew through all that tough yep. exterior. So uh, and uh, they are open topped, so your your guys can can shoot yes uh, f out out from it. From any point um, of the model, they they are embarked on. So, it's but cool. also also it juices up their firepower. So every time for every uh, uh, unmodified save roll of six that you make uh, when when someone's like shooting at the the shield wall, uh, it reflects the shots back at them, and they take the attacking unit takes the mortal. Yeah, wound. that's the tide wall field. So when you're shooting them, any sixes bounce back. Yep. It's kind of cool, and it then it can cool. explode though. So. It, it it can explode and kill everyone inside. There's yeah. also the tide wall drone port, uh, which is like the another tide wall thing, but it's uh, it's more for drones. Uh, you can you can put up to four uh, tactical drones on it, and they will um, they will start shooting at whatever they want. Yeah, they're pretty cool. This is also a mobile piece of of uh, fortification, which is nice. Move six. Uh, it's tough seven with ten wounds as well and a four up save. So again, it's on the tougher side of things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you can actually you can transport any number of Tau infantry characters and one other Tau Empire infantry unit, but no more than ten models in total. Uh, I don't think that counts the drones though. No, that does not count yeah. the drones. And it does have a drone control system on top yes, of that too. Yes, so that means that if you've got like infantry uh, units embarked on the drone port, the drones use that unit's ballistic skill instead of their own. Yeah. So if you've got like a, you know, Fireblade commander, or Cadre mm -hmm. Fireblade or whatever on there, you, your drones are suddenly BS2. I think it's pretty, uh, it's actually a pretty mean combo. <laughs> it is a pretty mean combo. Yeah, he's got the marker light, the drones are in there shooting. <clears throat> I think it could work. Yep. I think it could work. And then last but not least, there's the tide wall, tide wall gun rig. Yeah. Uh, this thing is the uh, uh, last of the fortifications. It, it comes with the Supremacy Railgun. Uh, which it, it's only got a five up ballistic skill, but it is, it's the the, the slightly better version of the railgun because it's a heavy two, um, and uh, it's other than that, it's just a normal railgun. Yeah. Um, so unless a unit, a uh, town empire infantry unit is actually embarked on it, uh, it can only target the nearest visible enemy. So um, that's a heads. It's an automated firing platform, but it's kind of cool. So you can you can totally bring it along. It moves six inches. It's a rail can. Uh, and again, it's annoying to get rid of. So, yep. Uh, with a tough seven and ten wounds. Yeah. Uh, and and then, then, last but not least, we have the Lord of War. Yes, the Storm Surge. Surge. Storm Surge. Storm Surge. Pretty mean. This yeah. is a pretty mean model, pretty mean unit. Uh, he's uh, cheaper now, too. Yeah. Power level 20, but points wise, it actually dropped a few. Yeah, well, um, and, and even power level wise, it, it dropped yeah. some as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Base just uh, just standard. It comes with a cluster rocket system, four destroyer missiles, two flamers, a pulse bla battle uh, blast cannon, and two smart missile systems. So it's packing a lot of firepower right it out is. the gate. Um, or you can swap out the uh, uh, blast cannon for a pulse driver cannon. Uh, you can give it up to three items from the support systems list, and you can swap out both of its flamers for uh, two burst cannons or two air bursting fragmentation projectors. Yeah, um, all of which are cool options. Yeah, all of which are kind of amazing options. Uh, you can also, so like kind of going through it, the cluster rocket system, 
is pretty much the same as it was, but that's heavy 4d6, strength mm -hmm. 5 shots. Um, destroyer missiles are unchanged. They still do a d3 mortal wounds once per battle. Um, but the pulse blast cannon has changed. Uh, very, very subtly, but like its damage is improved across uh, medium and long range. So this yeah. is a, a close range. This is another one of those weapons that has like the, the three uh, range profiles. Yeah. It's got a long range of 30, medium of 20, and a close of 10. So you do not want to get within 10 inches of this thing. The, the closer you get, the more damage it does, but the fewer shots you have. So at long range, it's heavy 6, strength 10, uh, no AP, but it does 2 damage. Uh, which is up from the one that it used to be. Yeah. Uh, at uh, like medium, medium range. range yeah, good. it's strength 12. So, oh man. Watch uh, out. Watch out. AP minus 2 and 4 damage. Yeah. Uh, or um, at ultra close range, which is 10 inches, it's strength 14, AP Ooh. minus 4, and does 6 damage straight. Yeah. Uh, I think the medium range is probably the way to go. Medium range is a sweet spot, but uh, again, <clears throat> it sounds like it doesn't put out quite the number of shots, but you do have the anchor ability. Yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, that is pretty amazing. So, at the end of your shooting phase, you can deploy your anchors. Um, while the anchors are deployed, uh, you cannot move for any reason. You can't pile in an attack in the fight phase, but you do add uh, one to all of your hit rolls. So, you, you're at BS3 norm, uh, instead of BS4. Yes, and then we also have the walking battleship roll. Uh, this model can fall back in the movement phase and still shoot and or charge in the same turn. Again, it's a Lord of War. Uh, when this model falls back, it can move over enemy infantry models, though it must end its move more than one inch away from any enemy models. In addition, this model may move and fire heavy weapons without suffering a penalty to his to hits rolls. Finally, this model only gains a bonus to save for being on or within cover if at least half of the model is obscured from the firer. So, yeah. overall, <clears throat> pretty cool stuff for the Storm Surge. And the Tau in general, uh, and that's pretty much all we're yeah. covering today, right? We'll be yeah, we'll we'll be back in another video with the uh, uh, stratagems, relics, warlord traits, all and, of the fun rules, and psychic powers. Just kidding, they don't have those. They don't have those. Yep. Uh, so we'll, we'll see you next time. Yeah, I'm I, Jr. I'm Adam Harry. We're both from Balls. Thanks for watching. Click to subscribe. Support us on Patreon. Check out more videos. And thanks for watching.